Hi, is this Professor Albert uh, Minkfeld? Speaking. At the Free University? Yes. Of Amsterdam? Yes, why? Well, this is Samuel Bade, former comedian and now financial journalist. I wanted to interview you for my podcast. What's it called? Um, uh, uh, obeyed, not afraid. Look, I, I have a, a meeting in five minutes. So I really don't have great, any time. Great. Our listeners care about the big topics and you're a big guy. Uh, I mean, you know, not like size, but big, you know, you're big in the, in the world of what you do and you study market macro structure. So that's pretty cool. Micro structure. Sorry, yeah. micro structure I study. Oh, 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 that means, uh, okay. Ma micro, micro, macro. I always mix them up. You say macro, I say micro, right? You call it mac and cheese. I call it Mike and cheese, right? I use a microphone, you use a macrophone. Uh, micro means small, not big, right? Uh, correct. We measure time between trades, for example, in microseconds. That also means small, right? Very much so. <sighs> and you're at the Free University? Indeed. And my blog is called My Two Cents. Now, what, what do you want? Well, I was hoping to talk about something really big or macro that you did. Well, I recently co-organized a research project with most members ever. Really? What, like a, a dozen? Well. Two dozen? 343, Sammy. What? Wow. <laughs> wow. Hello. Uh, that's, a, that, that, that's amazing. I, um, what is it about? It's about non-standard errors. My listeners are going to love it. I already got the title. Millions of members make mystifying mistakes. It's not millions. It's 343. And it's not mystifying mistakes. It is non-standard errors. OK, OK, how about this? Busloads of boffins beget bizarre blunders. Non-standard errors. Scores of scholars spawn strange snuffus. Non-standard errors, sir. <clears throat> Wait, I studied statistics at UC Berkeley before doing comedy. No big deal, but it kind of is. <laughs> I think I've heard of standard errors. Look, suppose somebody writes a joke for you. You deliver it to various audiences and you get some variation in laughter across those audiences, okay? That variation, that's your standard error. I guess you know about it. That's a basic concept in statistics. Now, instead, you give that same joke to a bunch of comedians who each run it on their audiences. And the variation in laughter across these comedians, now that is a non-standard error, okay? It's basically variation due to how Different people go differently about a particular task. So what joke did you use? Wait, I know. How many statisticians does it take to change a light bulb? That depends. It's really a matter of power. <laughs> get it? <laughs> yes, I, I get it. But we didn't use jokes, Sammy. We asked 164 research teams to uh, estimate a, a variety of quantities on the same financial data set. Then we asked some colleagues to review the results and the, and the papers, and those colleagues give feedback to the teams who then try it again. Wow, this is like the jury on last comic standing. Did they help? Yes, the variation in results uh, shrank significantly after the feedback. But a lot of variation remained, even though each research team was, in fact, studying the same questions, but using the same data set. This is not surprising. Credit reporting bureaus look at the same data about me, but one of them thinks I shouldn't be allowed to buy a car. And another one doesn't want me to come near a refrigerator. <laughs> but if there's 164 of them, who knows?
there could be one that thinks I should be locked up, and then another one who they would actually let me rent a studio instead of squatting here in my mom's basement. I mean, uh, that's not, I mean, it's, uh, it's kind of mine. But uh, either way, I get my own place. You know what I'm saying? So wouldn't it be useful for you to know about these size of these non-standard areas other than guessing about them? Come to think of it, it would be. So our paper says that when you have the claims of a particular empirical study, you shouldn't take them at face value because another particular team might come to different conclusions studying the same data. I think the public really deserves to know about these things. And how does the public get to know this? I guess through journalists like yourself. That's right. But shouldn't you have asked 164 journalists to try to report on the same studies and look at the variation in what they say? Hmm. Uh, that's interesting. A journalist driven variation. What would you call it? Slandered errors. <laughs> Catchy. I'll have to think about it, Tammy. How about you fly me to Amsterdam and we think about it together? I have other great ideas, like if before reporting on studies, the journalists are given cannabis. Uh, uh, sorry, I really have to go. Okay, or if you if if you have the journalist first visit the uh, uh, what's it what's it called? Uh, uh, Albert, you there? This must be some kind of error. <laughs>